Today, we discuss which New York Islanders player is under the most pressure for the upcoming NHL season. Plus, an Islanders contract is ranked near the best in the league. And we answer your mailbag, mailbag questions. All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Wednesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And you can also find us now on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search for Locked On Islanders. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. We've got a lot to get to on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe something you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, feel free to send us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. If you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. And uh, we're going to answer a couple of questions from our mailbag a little bit later on in the show. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders throughout the offseason, hirings, firings, free agent rumors, trade rumors. If it's happening to the Islanders, we will discuss it here on the Locked On Islanders podcast. Well, you know, I wish I could cue up the Billy Joel song, Pressure, or maybe Queen, you know, uh, Under Pressure with David Bowie. But, you know, copyright can't really do that. So, uh The big question we're going to get to early on is which Islanders players are under the most pressure for the upcoming season? And there are a lot of possible answers and a lot of players who have different types of pressure uh, that they're facing coming into the season. And if you look at it, uh, we did put up our... uh, poll on YouTube. So check that out and please vote uh, as to which player that you think is under the most pressure. And if you don't see the player who you think is under the most pressure, please feel free to comment and, you know, list that player as your vote. But to me, there's a number of guys. And when you talk about pressure, I I think you always kind of talk about money in the same sentence. And this is the year that Matthew Barzal, his pay goes way up. His extension kicks in. Bo Horvat, his extension kicks in. And to me, those two guys have to be on, you know, among the top contenders for players who are under the most pressure. Uh, when you're making north of $8 million a year and you are signed to provide offense for a team that struggles to put the puck in the net, there is pressure there. And, you know, for Matt Barzal, he's coming off an injury plague season that he only played 58 games. That means he missed 24 games last year, certainly hurt him as far as uh, his productivity is concerned. I think if he played a full 82 games, he probably gets to 20 goals, probably gets to about 76 points or so, but he's going to need to live up to that contract. And maybe Bo Horvat has even more pressure because Bo Horvat was looked at as a leader. He was looked at as a guy who was going to help Matthew Barzal and and vice versa, uh, develop his talent to the fullest. He's got the power play 
Both of them have pressure to improve the power play. And there is pressure certainly to be more productive than seven goals and 16 points in 30 games. And then what was it? One goal and one assist in six playoff games. There's got to be more from Bo Horvat as he has to live up to his new deal. I think anytime you're talking about players uh, on the ice with pressure, goalies have to be part of that equation. Uh, uh, unless you're playing for the you know 1980s Wayne Gretzky era Edmonton Oilers, goaltenders have a lot of pressure, but I think Islanders goaltenders have even more pressure, mostly because they have so little margin for error. You give up three goals in a game, and most likely you're not going to win that game if you're the goalie of the New York Islanders. So, you know, there's always going to be, or usually there's going to be one or two that you couldn't stop, whether it was a breakaway, a two-on-one, a rebound that's right in front, but, the, you know, you're whatever the reason, they're just, you can't let in too many softies if you are the goalie of the New York Islanders. So to me, Ilya Sorokin definitely belongs on that list. Do we think Oliver Wallstrom belongs on this list? To me, Wally does because he's on a one-year deal. He took a pay cut this offseason. Wallstrom is no longer, I mean, he's young for this team. Don't get me wrong, but he's 20 three years old, it's time for Oliver Wallstrom to try to take that step and establish himself as the guy the Islanders thought they were getting when they selected him in the first round. And I think the pressure is on Wallstrom to at least get 20 goals and to establish himself as a bona fide, genuine NHL player. I think there are other guys who are under pressure. Noah Dobson, certainly, on the list after he struggled mightily in his own zone and as quarterback of the power play. I think there's pressure on him. Certainly, there is pressure on Anders Lee to prove that his slow finish uh, to the season and performance in the playoffs, it was not the beginning of his you know, game deteriorating. It was just a slump, and I still think separating Bo Horvat and Anders Lee on the ice, not playing those two guys on the same line. And every day, as you've heard me discuss this in the past, uh, will benefit both Horvat and Lee because their styles, their playing styles are just too similar and they don't complement each other well. I think there's pressure on Brock Nelson uh, again, when you're playing for a goal-starved team and you're the number one goal scorer, you kind of got to show that you can keep getting it done because let's say Brock Nelson falls from 36 goals to 25 goals. How are the Islanders going to make up for that? So, you know, a little, little tricky there. I think Adam Pellick definitely has some pressure on him because, you know, he – Missed 21 games due to injury. Did not play particularly well at first when he came back. And needs to sort of bounce back and live up to his contract. How about Simon Holmstrom? Simon Holmstrom struggled in his first 50-game season in the NHL. Nine points, six goals, nine points in 50 games. Got to be a little pressure there. Uh, certainly Sebastian Ajo trying to hold on to that final spot in the lineup, prove that he is a legitimate everyday NHL player. I, I think you can see up and down this Islanders lineup, there is just a lot of pressure on this team and a lot of different individual players. So I guess the question we're posing to you, Islander fans, who do you think is under the most pressure heading into the 2023-2024 season. All right, we have got a lot more to discuss on today's show. A little more love from the national media. 
rating one of the Islanders' contracts, one of the best five of the offseason. We'll talk about that. Plus, we'll answer some of your questions, and we'll have our Islanders' birthday of the day. All that and more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting on Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you could bet, spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. And hey, Met fan, Yankee fan, fan of any team, you're going to find lots of great odds and props and things you can bet on on FanDuel. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on baseball than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. So contracts, and look, I've got to say contracts are always kind of controversial. Most of the time, players overpay uh, or or teams overpay for players. And, you know, it's always difficult to get value. One of the things that has hurt the Islanders is the length and amount of money being paid to non-star players and that has hurt the islanders ability to land a star player well the athletic just did uh, an article and listed the five best star contracts in the national hockey league and guess which islanders player made the list yeah goalie Ilya sorokin sorokin uh they're talking about not the deal this year where he's got one more year left on his old contract. That's going to pay him $4 million. No question that $4 million a year deal puts him at the high end of value. But this article actually is putting forth the, (coughs) (coughs) excuse me, the extension the eight-year extension that doesn't really start till 2024, 2025 and has an $8.25 million cap hit. Why? Well, let's face it. Ilya Sorokin is an elite goaltender. He was second in the voting for the Vezina Trophy last year. And at the age of 27, he is in his prime He probably has five, six, seven more years of elite level goaltending play. And I think you can make a strong argument that Ilya Sorokin is the best goalie in the league. And if not, certainly, you know, he was voted one of the top three this year. Who are you going to pick over him? Andre Vasilevsky, Igor Shosturkin, uh, even though. It, 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 Connor Hellebuck, I mean, it's very, very difficult to say that there are goalies out there who are head and shoulders better than Ilya Sorokin. And look, there are other goalies out there who are making, already making, more money than Sorokin. And Sorokin still has eight years left after this year, so nine years left on his contract, and the number, the prices, we know they all just go up. They may not go up as fast, depending on you know the salary cap, but they don't go down. They only go up. So Carey Price was earning more per year. Sergei Bobrovsky earning more. Probably Connor Hellebuck going to end up earning more once. He signs a new deal and you're just looking at a situation where Ilya Sorokin is going to just keep on getting better 
uh, value for that contract. And, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that Ilya Sorokin, barring injury and, uh, you know, Islander fans only know that too well, a la Rick DiPietro, but barring a serious injury, Ilya Sorokin, one thing you could say about him throughout his career, and you look at his time in the KHL, you look at his time in the NHL, Ilya Sorokin has been consistent. He plays at a high level on a consistent basis. So clearly having Sorokin here and at 8.25 million next year, it's going to be a, a very good deal. But five years from now, four years from now, when Sorokin is 31, 32, uh, and when top goalies will probably be making 10, 11, 11 and a half million dollars a year, and Sorokin is still making 8.25 million, and you still got him locked up for another three or four years, that's going to be an even better value for the New York Islanders. So look, I'm going to say it this way. When I think Lou Lamorello makes a bad signing, I call him out on it. I want to tell it to my viewers and my listeners the way I see it. And when, when a questionable contract is signed, I'm going to say, hey, I don't think this is a great deal. And here's why. But when a good deal is signed, when a high value contract is signed, I, I have to praise the, the general manager's move. And to me, this deal for Ilya Sorokin, again, barring injury or barring a drastic fall off in Sorokin's play, is a great long-term deal for the New York Islanders. And I think the athletic writers got it right when they basically said that this is one of the best five contracts in the NHL among star players right now. So uh, finally, a little respect for the Islanders organization. This is what, the second time in, in a couple of weeks that we've been getting a, a little recognition and respect from the national media. And I got to say, it's, it's kind of refreshing, to say the least, to see positive articles actually being written about the New York Islanders. So bring it. I hope it's the start of a trend. I hope there are more reasons for the national media to you know, say good things about this organization. And uh, yeah, here, here we go. So, all right, we have got a lot more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. We're going to go to the mailbag. We're going to answer your email questions. We've got a couple of them for today. And don't forget, if you want to send in your questions, I'm always happy to talk a little Islanders hockey. So please, uh, Locked on Islanders at gmail.com. We've got that and our Islanders birthday of the day still to come on this episode of the Locked on Islanders podcast. The uh, person asking this question said not to mention his name, so I won't. Uh, but his question is, I think many Islander fans would agree we have way too many veterans on our team. And one of those is Cal Clutterbuck. He's a bit older. He's a great defensive-minded bottom six forward and a solid penalty killer. But since we have a couple of guys who can kill penalties, I think Cal is a guy we can afford to lose. I think there are teams out there that have enough offense and need to play better defensively. He isn't too expensive. Last year, $1.75 million contract. Uh, are there any teams out there who could use a vet like Cal Clutterbuck for penalty killing, physicality, and would be eager enough to trade for him. And would Lou want to do that to free up cap space? Uh, he could also move fashing to play with Sezikis and Martin, give Holmstrom or Gauthier playing time, or could another 
Islanders vet be valuable to another team? Let me know your thoughts. Well, thank you for the question. I'm sorry I didn't get to it. I know it was uh, a little bit, you know, you sent it in a couple of weeks ago. But here is the situation. Yeah, I think Cal Clutterbuck has some value. I don't think it's a lot. I think the Islanders would be lucky to get a fifth or sixth round pick for Cal Clutterbuck at this stage in his career. It's not that he's not a good player. It's that there are, you know, there are teams that could use him, but I don't think you're gaining a lot by trading Cal Clutterbuck. Yes, he is. Uh, there are other players, you mentioned some of them, Hudson Fashing, et cetera, who could fit into that fourth line role, Gauthier Fashing, uh, Durando, if he's up there. But I think, first of all, the Islanders love the leadership and intangibles that Cal Clutterbuck gives them. And second of all, again, he could be part of a deal but I don't think you're maximizing his value. I think you want to maximize his value. If he stays relatively healthy this year, the closer you get to the trade deadline, that's when I think you can move Cal Clutterbuck for a team that's in the playoff hunt, that needs that checking forward with playoff experience. I I, I think you could move him. Are there other players you could move? Maybe you can move Matt Martin. We've talked every day or so about J.G. Pajot. So there are guys you can move, but Lou Lamarello likes his veterans, and I don't know if he's eager necessarily to move on from them, even though sometimes he probably should. Next question. This is from Joe in Maryland. Uh, Thanks for your podcast and appreciate listening every day, and Gil, and three days during the summer. Hard to get good aisles info from Maryland, and I appreciate you and your podcast more than you know. Joe, thank you so much. My comment is on Wally, Oliver Wallstrom. I don't understand why we would ever trade him and do not want Lou to do so. He's the only young player we have in the system that's a legitimate top six forward. He was hurt last year. His value is well below market at the moment. I can see him being a 25 to 30 goal scorer, and he will help tremendously on the power play given the opportunity. The power play was pathetic, but Wallstrom would make it so much better. Trading him for an unknown or a rental makes zero sense. We need to get younger, and what, uh, and we have what we need already on the roster. Please, move or ship Palmieri if possible. Heck, even Anders Lee, as much as it pains me, makes more sense to move. We won't trade Lee, of course, nor should the captain be shipped. But again, the answer is already in the building, and his name is Oliver Wallstrom. Joe, Thank you so much for the email and for the kind words about the podcast. Look, that's Oliver Wallstrom's potential. If he is the player the Islanders thought he was going to be when they drafted him, yes, he definitely, definitely is not the guy you want to trade. And I, I'll add to that, and I think you made a good point. If you're trading him now, his value is low. You're trading him coming off an injury when he's never scored more than, what, 13 goals in an NHL season. So you would not be getting great value for him. But I think we're jumping the gun a little bit if you think he's a 25 to 30 goal scorer right now. He may be, but he hasn't proven it yet. And... He is facing a make-or-break season. He's on a one-year prove-it deal. I think the Islanders are best served. I agree with you, Joe. Give him a chance to show what he can do. If he stays healthy this year and gives you 20-plus goals and shows you that he can develop into that 25- to 30-goal guy and help you on the power play, by all means. To me, you give him every chance you can get. And if you trade him, it better be like a deal for someone like an Alex DeBrinket, who, even though obviously he can't be acquired, but when I say that, someone who is young, someone who is a proven goal-scoring talent and who you can lock up for a five, six, seven-year contract 
rather than, as you alluded to, a rental player. So good point there, Joe, and thank you so much for the email and for the comment. All right, time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And today is the 45th birthday of former Islanders forward Oleg Kavasha. Kavasha, a third-round pick by the Florida Panthers back in 1996, ended up coming to the Islanders in 2000-2001, spent uh, five years with the Islanders, really four and a half, then went to the then Phoenix Coyotes before heading back to Russia. He is a native of Moscow. And, you know, he never scored more than 15 goals in a season for the Islanders. His best year, 03-04, 81 games, 15 goals, 51 points. Did play in 17 playoff games for the Islanders, had a goal and three assists. Played in almost 500 career NHL games, 81 goals, 217 points, 300 35 penalty minutes, but his best game as an Islander, well, here's one of them, February 11th, 2004, Islanders visiting Dallas to take on the Dallas Stars. The Islanders goalie, Garth Snow, Marty Turco, the goalie for the Dallas Stars, but in this game, Oleg Kavasha, a goal, three assists, four points to pace the team. He was a plus three, his goal came at even strength. And he had four shots on goal, which tied him with Marius Tchaikovsky for the team lead. Islanders and Stars end up tied 4-4 four to four in this game. Looked like the Islanders had it won when Kabasha set up Trent Hunter with a minute 47 left in regulation. But with less than seven seconds left, future Islander Bill Guerin tied the game and no winner could be determined in overtime and yeah they still had ties back in 2003 2004 so uh oleg kavasha is our islanders birthday of the day 45 years old today for oleg kavasha all right thanks again for making locked on islanders your first listen every day every day is friday on the show we will have the latest Islanders news notes and happenings, and we'll take another, you know, interesting angle on what the Islanders are doing and uh, basically an angle on how this team is looking heading into the season, which is really a lot closer than you think, less than two months now until training camp opens up. Don't forget to uh, go on YouTube and answer our poll question, and we'll definitely talk about the results probably on Monday's show. Until then, stay safe, everybody. Have a great day or two. And of course, let's go Islanders.